so hello everyone uh, my name is tarun uh, in today's talk we'll see an example of how you can embed a tail scale into your application layer right uh, a lot of the use case for tail scale is on the system level right people install tail scale on their system and expect the whole device to be available in their tail net but we'll see a different use case focused on self hosting in this talk uh, yeah before that uh, I'm Tarun Potlapati. I'm from Hyderabad. Uh, if you have had Hyderabad the biryani, then it's from our city. Yeah. Our city is famous for that. Uh, so I'm an engineer at Dragonfly. Previously, I worked on Linkerd, Gitpod. Uh, just like many folks here, I like I like my coffee and my runs. Um, I'm at Tarun.com and also with the same UID on Twitter. So first, right? What, what do we mean by modern apps here in this in this scenario? Obviously, it's it's as general as it can get, right? On a on a first look. But uh, by modern apps, I essentially mean any app that that a general would uh, that a general user would use, right? Uh, most apps they allow users to store and retrieve data, and the format of the data is how the app is differentiated, right? For example, if you see if you if you use your if you have used your to-do lists, your data is a is a bunch of checklist items, maybe projects and all of that. Mm, but on a on a note-taking app, it would be a different thing, right? So so essentially, apps like that. And most of these apps are cross device, right? You want your Notion, your no uh, your notes to be available across devices, across your uh, across your phone, iPad, and all of that. Examples, like I said, to-do list, calendar, they are not taking a lot of them. So a lot of these apps usually work in this way, right? Uh, even the open source ones. Uh, you have a multi-tenant server that you run on a server box uh, to which you you configure your firewall, all of that, make it available. All of it, and then you have multiple client devices, right? It could be your iPad, it could be your phone, it could be your Mac OS, and then you access that data, manipulate the data, add events, all of that. So now let's talk about yeah, self-hosting, right? Uh, I'm sure a lot of people here would love anything say self-hosting, including myself. Uh, so we love self-hosting, right? It, it, uh, the 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 OS is. The OSS ecosystem you know, has a bunch of tools that you can run on your own, even including note taking, calendar, a lot of those tools that you can run on your own. Which means you also own your own all of your data, right? You are not dependent on some external party for your data. Uh, yep. Uh, and there are a bunch of examples, right? Even in the categories that we spoke about, to-do lists, all of that. A lot of good open source alternatives are out there. But these are though these open source are, open source alternatives exist. But they don't focus the general user, right? The general user doesn't really know a lot of uh, like self-hosting things, how to configure firewall to that service, hosting all, all of that. So the bar for self-hosting is way too high for a, a general user. That's the focus, right, of this uh, of this topic, right, uh, of this talk, right, uh, today. And then uh, think, uh, <laughs> and then think about all the networking stuff that has to be there, right, in between your devices. To make the communication actually possible, yeah. For example, even even on your note-taking app, your phone should be able to talk to a central server where data where it, where it stores data, and then the the other device, maybe your maybe your macOS app, should be able to talk to your server. All of that. So, the, so there's a lot of networking problems here when you try to self-host any of these apps. Mm, how can the clients uh, the client apps access the serving layer, right, where the data is stored uh, and can be retrieved, and what happens when these devices yeah, move, yeah, move across networks, right? We always yeah, move across networks. We use mobile data, our ISP, uh, like our IP, it keeps changing a lot of that. And and the firewall, right? You can't just expose your service on the internet and and expect to everything to work, right? There's a lot of uh, authentication mechanism that you have to figure out, firewall also on, on who can access and who cannot. So obviously, the solution for all of this is blockchain. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we are here, it, it probably means it, it's tail scale, right? Uh, yeah. Why? Uh, that's a, yeah, let's answer the why, right? Tail scale already allows us to do a lot of these things. All your devices, once they're connected to your the tail net, they can talk to each other, they can share files, uh, a, a lot of this. A lot of this already exists because of the magical tail scale uh, your runtime that is, uh, your, that is present on all these devices, right? Mm. With tail scale, even your VPN, like WireGuard networking layer, is all abstracted away. 
uh, I mean, all of us here, like whoever used uh, your tail scale, mostly has good things because it works automatically, right? You don't have to do a lot of things. Once you install the binary and download, it mostly works, which I think is pretty awesome in the whole in the whole networking ecosystem because uh, the networking ecosystem is not popular yeah, for that, for things to work right away. And then, uh, like we saw in the morning, uh, in one of those talks, TSNet, uh, the core part of this whole talk, allows embedding uh, your tail scale into your application layer. So instead of having to install the whole tail scale daemon on your system and, exp and, and route all your, all your traffic through, through that, you can always uh, use TSNet to essentially embed your tail scale in, in, inside your applications and expect uh, and get similar experience for your applications also, not just your devices. And then, uh, like we already know, login with TailScale is as simple authentication to mechanism as we have, right? Uh, whenever you want to, whenever you want to connect your new device, all you do is log in with TailScale, you enter your password, and then it all works, right? Yeah, mostly. So I think uh, a general user would be really happy with the whole login with uh, the mechanism, right? Without having to configure anything. So, th so that's what we are aiming at in the demo today. So hopefully the demo, go the demo gods are with me. Let's try it out. So essentially, here I have a tail scale, uh, a tail net that is called a tail to-do app. So, so today we'll see a to-do app built on top of, uh, built on top of your tail scale as its application, as its networking layer. So, uh, so the to-do applications across devices that we, see, that we'll see all have, all have tail scale and all have tail scale embedded in them and they use the tail scale, uh, uh layer to talk between each other. Uh, here, so first, right? So first, before we do anything, let's see the uh, let's see the access controls, right? Because we are we are attaching some services to TailScale now. We will do that. Uh, we need a scoped access for that, right? We need all these services to be part of one single thing, and and then we manage the, yeah, them in, in a sim, in a in a singular way. So we use the tag call the ACL tag call the Tail to do, right? So any device that any service that is part of this. Uh, tag essentially can talk to each other because we configured uh, that to work. So, so all the services inside, all the services that are tagged with a tail to do can talk between each other, and they can't talk to anything outside it. So we we have that boundary, right? Because uh, these communication, uh, all these apps, they, they only need to talk talk between each other and not have to talk to my MacBook or some other device yeah, that the user owns. Uh, so we have an we have an ACL yeah just to do do that, and uh, now let's see the demo, right? First, yep. mm, so we have three different applications here today that we look at. So there's the to-do server. Let me zoom. So there's the uh, a to-do uh, the server that runs on a server, right? It could be your desktop to etc. Because it, uh, you're self-hosting this for you, which means you're probably not going to uh, reach a lot of scale. But if you do, then you, you might have to yeah, move, yeah, move to a server. The to-do server is essentially an open API uh, Swagger yeah, generation. So essentially, we have a we have a to-do API generated through Swagger, and then the, uh, through Swagger we also generated a, a server package. So if you see, um, if you see the Swagger document, all we have is uh, three three URL paths, right? That exist. You can get to-dos, you can post to-dos, and then you can update an, a to-do a to-do based on its ID. Now, after you generate the server, uh, this is, uh, most of the code here is generated by the Swagger uh, client itself. Uh, we did not do anything, the Swagger gen binary. Uh, all, all we did extra was this additional th the code here. So essentially, we are using the TSNet, uh, the TSNet Golang uh, your, your package to import the tail scale yeah, runtime, a part of it, into our, into, our, into our binary so that it can directly talk to tail scale, the tail net. So essentially, uh, we retrieve an auth key and then we use that auth key to create a tailnet server, uh, and then we embed the the open API Swagger into that uh, into that tailnet server. So essentially, now the open API server is connected to your tailnet. Let's let's run it. Uh, so obviously, it, it needs a bunch of a API stuff, right? So we we load a bunch of tokens from one password to to make that possible. If 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 this works, we sh if we go back to our tail net, we should see the new uh, machine available. Yep, as you see here, we already have a, uh, a server now, now, now connected to our tail net. This is a HTTP endpoint, uh, yeah, like we mentioned. But as you can see here, 
only that application uh, is attached to Tailnet. Like all the other services, like because I'm connected with this, uh, I can talk to the server, uh, the to-do server. But we, uh, without this, only the application would would be attached to Tailnet. So now let's interact with the HTTP server first, and then we'll see we'll see what all you can do first. So if you do curl on the on the HTTP to-do server, um, because we we are connected to the tail scale, it should work, but Mm, maybe I refresh. Mm. Yep, it's a different IP. Um, maybe let's log out and log in here. Now, if we log in, So, so we're connecting our MacBook to Tailnet, just so that we can have low, uh, we can have access through your uh, yeah, yeah, tail scale once. Now with that, it's connected. Yep, as you can see, uh, we we get a list of a JSON output, right, of the to-do list items. We have visit Golden Gate Bridge, give tail scale talk, and and prepare tail scale talk. So so we're good there. We are good there. So now. Uh, now, now what we could do is uh, uh, we are able to talk to the server here because we, we are connected to tail scale, right? If we, if, we, if we switch it off, we are not going to be able to talk to the server because uh, the tail scale daemon on the system would not be running then. Now let's add a different to-do item too, right? Uh, let's do, yeah, let's do get a beer. Uh, I, I plan to do that this evening. As you can see, uh, a new to-do got added here with an ID4. Uh, uh, so now, uh, now let's uh, yeah, let's disconnect from tail scale, right? So now we we should not be able to talk to the API, obviously. As you can see, we are not able to yeah, resolve the server anymore. Now, now as you saw, we only uh, did one server component right now, which means. Uh, but my talk was about like the client apps, right? That was the core thing. So let's let's check them out. Uh, is it running already? No. So essentially, uh, we have a web app right now. In which uh, uh, in which we embed uh, we embed tail scale using Wasm. So if if you have tried out the tail scale SSH tail scale SSH uh, your console in the in the UI, they essentially run a uh, tail scale cons sorry a SSH uh, binary inside your browser. So you're not a, you're not even like trusting the system. So we'll try to do the same here. Uh, it's listening on 9090. So once we do here, as you can see, it's it's my same uh, tail to do app and it's asking me to log in. Now, once I log in with Tailscale and I connect it to my to the same Tailnet that the server is running, you should see the to-do pop-up automatically. Let's refresh once. Yep, as you can see, we have all the to-do list here. The and the and the Wasm client here, uh, like like all the Tailscale stuff is running in the browser. We are not even uh, if you see the Tailscale here is switched off, and we are not able to talk to Tailscale uh, the same server from the command line. So essentially, we embed we embedded the whole. Uh, Wasm binary that makes the communication possible with other services in your tailnet. Uh, that uh, if you if you also uh, just see the network, you can also see that we are also doing a lot of tail scale stuff to make that possible, etc. Uh, if you want to know more on how on how all of this works, there's a very good blog post from the tail scale folks on how how it is built. But now now we saw one other the client app, right? But no, but not everyone is happy with just a web app. We want we want native apps, right? We want a native Android app. And and I thought why shouldn't why shouldn't we write out? But then I'm not an Android developer, and it was very hard, obviously, if I if I if I try to write native code. But I thought I could take a shortcut. Essentially, I forked the your tail scale Android app and and made it into a to-do app so that it's all the same tail scale logic running running inside. But but you have, but it's a, as you can see this is a very familiar a tail scale android app here that is running but once you log in all you get is a it's a to do list not your uh, machines in your network and all of that so let's skip that let's log in hmm. yep sign in with google yep to do one Now, once we log in uh, and connect, essentially, if you go here, it's it's now creating a VPN profile for the to-do app. And once it does, 
You can see all your to-do list have popped up on your Android app too. And, be, and here too, we embedded the tail scale into, into the Android app itself. The Android app is the one that is cre creating the VPN profile. And, and if you close the app, it automatically yeah, takes away that VPN profile too. So whenever you're using the app, it tries to yeah, run it, etc. So you kind of embedded your tail scale inside your app, but it's still not as native as the web one the, yeah, that we saw here. Yep. Yep. Now, if you see here also, we can see all the devices that are connected here, the to-do web app, the Android app, and the to-do server. So essentially, uh, I thought it was an interesting use case when I saw the yeah, Tailscale SSH for self-hosting, right? So now to conclude the whole talk, uh, I think I think Tailscale uh, yeah, can go into the application layer in a way too, right? Even for general users, they should be able to log in with Tailscale and, and have other cross-device experiences, right, with their apps, uh, is what I thought, and, and I thought it was a fun experiment. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.